So listen, everybody, there's only two awards left. And this is me again, knocking at the door of, of support. If you believe in this work, and if you want to support these authors, please, 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 please consider donating to this year's National Book Awards. Next up is the category of the books I have the most admiration for, the National Book Award for Nonfiction. The 2020 finalists for the National Book Award for Nonfiction venture broadly in subject and form. Across biography, history, essays, and memoir, these books consider immigration and the denial of citizenship, the lives of historical and literary icons, the dispossession of Native Americans, and what it means to be black in America. They expand our world. The panel chair for this year's National Book Award for Nonfiction is Terry Tempest Williams, the author of 16 books, including the environmental literature classic, Refuge, An Unnatural History of Family and Place. She divides her time between the Red Rock Desert of Utah and Cambridge, Massachusetts, where she is a writer in residence at Harvard Divinity School. Good evening. My name is Terry Tempest Williams, and thank you for supporting the National Book Foundation. And bless you, Lisa, for bringing us together and for Anna for holding this up. At a time when we hardly know what to believe or who to trust or where truth dwells, the nonfiction books my colleagues and I read this year restored our faith in the power of one's word, these words, placed by writers thoughtfully, lyrically, with a probity and fidelity to facts and a love of ideas. You found and crafted righteous stories that moved us, disturbed us, and reoriented our thinking. You stirred our hearts with impeccable language as you explored the style of the varied fields of nonfiction. A story well told becomes the conscience of a community. We become accountable for that knowledge which has been shared. As a result, we not only see the world differently, we re-inhabit it. Because of what we encountered in these five extraordinary books, my fellow judges and I became a community who cared, not only about the revelations and wisdom contained in these narratives, but a community who cared about each other. This is the al alchemy of literature. How we read is how we read one another. I want to thank with all my heart, Hannah Oliver Depp, Yunte Wan, David Troyer, and Jim Goodman. In this pandemic that began as a pause that is now a place, please know that you marked this moment for me with respect and friendship and love. My deep bows of gratitude. To those honored tonight, we recognize your gifts of making a true story, a living landscape. We fell in love with Carson McCullers and the power of obsession, how identities not only shared but interrogated are deepened. We felt the ignorance and cruelties in how to make a slave, even as you made us laugh until we didn't. And you exposed the heinous and the methodical policies of racism in this country we call America. The two often hidden and shadowed histories, past and present, that were brought into full light to the undocumented Americans. And it is true, the dead are arising. You showed us we are indeed an unworthy republic. You left us with outrage and grief, but also with a force field of hope and the dignity of ancestors. The five finalists for the National Book Award in nonfiction are Carla Cornejo, Villa Vicencio, The Undocumented Americans, One World. Les Payne and Tamara Payne, The Dead Are Arising, The Life of Malcolm X. Claudio Sant, Unworthy Republic, the dispossession of Native Americans and the road to inter Indian territory, Norton. Jen Chapland, my autobiography of Carson McCullers, Tin House Books. Gerald Walker, How to Make a Slave and Other Essays, Mad Creek Books, 
Ohio State University Press. And the winner of the 71st National Book Award in Nonfiction is The Dead Are Arising, The Life of Malcolm X, Less Pain and Tamara Pain. Less Pain and Tamara Pain, The Dead Are Arising, The Life of Malcolm X. Live Right, an imprint of W.W. Norton and Company. Les and Tamara Payne refuse a simplistic depiction of Malcolm X, one of our greatest and most misunderstood Americans. Malcolm's story, the rise from street criminal to devoted moralist and revolutionary, is as unlikely as it is profound. Incisive and comprehensive, this intensely human portrait is written with a dedicated beauty and uncompromising detail that matches Malcolm's own life. The Dead Are Arising is the most accessible and compelling telling of it since the autobiography. Huh. Hi. Good evening. Thank you so much for this. Um, this is such a bittersweet moment. Um, I really wish my father was here for this. And um, I, I'm, I, it's so hard to believe this. Um, first of all, I just want to read my statement here, which is, after interviewing Wilfred and Philbert Little, the two older brothers of Malcolm X, my father, Les Payne, decided to write The Dead Are Arising. <laughs> a book that would, a book that would bring one of the most important Americans of the 20th century into clearer focus to show not just his family, but the world in which he was born, to provide context for the man who, who more than any other leader of the 1960s moved Blacks to consider who we, who we are, from whence we come, and to plan for what we could become. Since beginning the journey to finishing The Dead or Arising, we see how Malcolm X has influenced people international. Today, we see the youth all over the world continue to embrace him because his message still rings true. I want to thank the family at Live Right, a Norton imprint, Julia Redhead, John Glussman, Laura Golden, Peter Miller, Stephen Pace, Nick Curley, Gabe Kachuk, Cordelia Calvert, Haley Bracken. I also want to thank Daniel Crew of Penguin UK, Trent Duffy, Liz Bass, Paul Lee, Bob Weil, who is the editor, for believing in the importance of this book and believing in my father and his commitment in editing this manuscript. And to Faith Childs, our agent, whose steady energy throughout this journey has kept this book on course. Without you and Bob, this book would not have been possible. I also thank you, thank my fellow nominees, the judges, and the National Book of Foundation, and Lisa Lucas. Most importantly, I want to thank my father, Les Payne, for committing to this enormous work and making his life's work, and for bringing me on as his co-pilot. My mother, Violet, my brothers, Jamal and Hailey, Walter Evans, Walter and Linda Evans, my father's siblings, uncles, John, Joseph, Raymond, and my aunt, Marianne, and their families for their love and support over these 30 years. Thank you. <laughs>